This video was made possible by our generous supporters on Patreon. Check out patreon.com slash nwr for all the details. Brand new DLC has just arrived for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, the first wave of what will ultimately double the size of the game over the next two years. The courses pull from a variety of past Mario Kart games, along with several from the mobile title Mario Kart Tour. These are particularly interesting, as the new track design in Mario Kart Tour has been widely praised, even if the game itself is somewhat divisive. Having incredible tracks like Ninja Hideaway available in a more traditional Mario Kart format is just objectively a good thing. All that being said, as you start to mix these courses in with the rest of the tracks already present in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, you may start to notice a significant artistic shift in the presentation of these courses. The more granular details of the rest of Mario Kart 8 are replaced by a softer, more cartoony art style. It's an art style more in keeping with that of Mario Kart Tour, and I'll say right off the bat that I actually really like it even if I'm not sure about its juxtaposition against the rest of the game. So why did Nintendo make this choice? Is it some attempt to keep new Mario Kart content visually consistent? After all, most of the designs in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe date back to the original Mario Kart 8 release on Wii U back in 2014, eight years ago. Was it merely time-saving to port the tracks directly from Mario Kart Tour without having to redesign them? Or should we simply fall back on the old internet favorite of calling Nintendo lazy because the grass isn't as realistic? I'll give you a hint. Those first two? Totally valid questions. The third one? Not quite as valid, but we're still gonna dig into it. In fact, let's start with the Nintendo is lazy perspective. Most of this comes from what could be seen as a simplification of elements that appear across a variety of tracks, new and old. Most notably grass and foliage, such as bushes and trees. Now there are two elements to this, the first being geometry, the actual 3D shapes of objects, along with materials, which are the various types of texture images used to give that 3D shape some detail and determine how it reacts to things such as sunlight. Now geometrically, it does appear that the courses in this DLC that were last seen in Mario Kart Tour do share much of the same geometry with that release, which makes sense. Keep in mind that the Switch is built on a mobile chipset based on the Tegra X1 from 2015. In terms of hardware, it arguably has more in common with a phone or a tablet than it does with a traditional home console. And it stands to reason that courses designed for modern phones would be a match for the geometric detail one might expect from a Switch title. As for materials, it is immediately clear when comparing them with the materials in Mario Kart Tour that many of them have been significantly updated. They still maintain the art style of Tour, but the change in detail on near-camera objects like the road itself is night and day. It's also worth pointing out that these materials are just as detailed in terms of resolution and complexity as those seen elsewhere in Mario Kart 8. Now, you may look at the grass in Moo Moo Farm, and then the grass on Toad Circuit, and just call me crazy, but from a purely technical point of view, the demand on the hardware for both of these materials would be identical. Both are merely a combination of an alpha texture, which is an image of grass for Moo Moo Farm, and a very soft noise-like pattern for Toad Circuit, along with a normal map, which determines how an image reacts to light and gives it the appearance of bumps and lets it pick up interesting specular highlights. That's it. Both of these materials work exactly the same way and require the exact same amount of work to implement. In fact, just like how these new courses largely share a single grass material, most of the courses in the original Mario Kart 8 also share a single grass material, meaning that if they wanted to, it would quite literally be drag and drop to change between the two, meaning that this was a completely conscious choice. It would take virtually no effort to make the grass in these new courses look just like it did in the base Mario Kart 8 courses. It could even be argued that it would have been easier to use assets that already existed within Mario Kart 8's engine rather than importing new ones from Mario Kart Tour, meaning that making it look like Tour was arguably the more demanding option. Now, none of that is to say that one looks better than the other. Like I said, on a purely technical level, they're essentially the same. There are certainly areas where the dense detail in the original Mario Kart 8 courses really shines, 
but then there are also areas where it relies more on a texture of questionable resolution rather than geometric detail, like in the cliffs along the edge of the tracks, where I much prefer the Mario Kart Tour approach. Trees in the base game are a combination of underlying geometry and an array of billboards to give a sense of depth to the foliage, whereas in the new DLC, these objects are simply basic geometry. It's up to your personal preference. Personally, I think I honestly might prefer the Mario Kart Tour look of the new DLC, but that is entirely subjective. What I suspect we can all agree on is that the choice to make this drastic art style change within a single game is very odd. Now, like I already said, it does make sense for Nintendo to use the geometry of courses already present in Mario Kart Tour from a purely technical standpoint. It's a fairly good match for what was in Mario Kart 8. But there are also some courses here, such as Coconut Mall and Shroom Ridge, which have not yet appeared in Mario Kart Tour. For these courses, both would have needed new geometry and materials, and a choice was made to make them match Tour rather than the rest of Mario Kart 8. So why go in that direction? Well, simply put, it makes sense to make these courses in a way that could also be easily brought over to Tour. And while yes, courses more in line with Mario Kart 8's visual style could totally be supported by Tour, I think it's safe to say that Nintendo sees the art style of Tour as the modern look of Mario Kart. In fact, one could argue that Tour's art style is more consistent with those of Double Dash, Wii, and Seven. It's crazy to think about, but Mario Kart 8's art design is close to a decade old. While it's still the most recent console release, the series has sorta of moved on. And by the time this DLC runs its course, half of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe will have this new Mario Kart art style. So while it feels odd now, while it's only 8 tracks, in the end it will, if nothing else, be on balance with the rest of the game. But what's your opinion on this new look for Mario Kart? Do you prefer it, or do you miss the more realistic art from the rest of Mario Kart 8? Did you even notice that there had been a change before seeing this video pop up? Let me know, I'd love to discuss it. Like I said, I'm a fan of both, but I have to admit, I really like this new look. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving it a like, and hey, maybe subscribe to Nintendo World Report TV. You can find a whole lot more on NintendoWorldReport.com, and if you want to chat with us about this or anything else Nintendo related, head over to our Discord. You can also reach out directly to me using Twitter and the handle on screen. My name's John Raritan, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time. This video was made possible by our generous supporters on Patreon. Did you know that Nintendo World Report is funded directly by fans like you? When you support Nintendo World Report on Patreon, you get immediate access to multiple exclusive podcasts every month, exclusive Discord channels, an early look at select content, and more. All for as little as a dollar a month. Check out patreon.com slash nwr for all the details.